The election day is August 6th. An emergency election is coming up in Bannock County. The fate of a fire department on the line. Plus, a drive-by shooting in Idaho Falls. It is 6 o'clock and 63 degrees, and this is KPVI News Today for Wednesday, July 31st, 2019. KPVI News Today. News that works for you. Good morning, and thank you so much for watching today. I'm Rachel Cox Rosen. And good morning, I'm Michael Lodovino. So Michael, how's it looking outside today? Out there for today, it will be much kind of a gloomier day out there. We'll see a lot more clouds in the sky in a few areas. Could even see some showers and storms develop from that, but that won't keep temperatures from being on the hot side once again. Many locations will once again reach those 90s. Across Idaho Falls right now, a little chilly out there, a temperature of 51 degrees. Still seeing those clouds, and those clouds will increase as we move throughout the day leaving us with a completely overcast sky by this afternoon and the same is true across Pocatello. We're starting off the morning pretty mild at 64 degrees with a mostly cloudy sky and again those clouds will increase throughout the day and I'll talk more about the chance for some moisture coming up my full forecast. We kind of need it I think. Yes. Thank right? you so much Michael. Our top story this morning, a quote targeted drive-by shooting luckily ends with no injuries in Idaho Falls. According to Idaho Falls Police, only vehicles were damaged in the incident at Topfis Park last night. Multiple shots were reported to IFPD at around 9.30. Investigators say the shooting happened after an argument between two groups. After a search of the area around the park, police took an unknown man in for questioning. It's not clear what the man's involvement in the incident is. Police say there is no no danger to the public. And Pocatello police have arrested a man after another shooting yesterday afternoon. It happened around 1245 in the alley behind 424 North 10th Avenue, about three blocks from Clark Street. Police say a man and woman were found sitting in a car parked in the alley, both with gunshot wounds to their torsos. A witness provided first aid until authorities could take the victim's support of medical center. No word on their condition. Officers quickly found the suspect, 32 year old Stephen Holmes and the gun used in the shooting. He's been arrested and charged with two counts of aggravated battery with a weapon enhancement. U.S. Marshals are looking for a man wanted for multiple violent crimes. Samir Sam, afraid of bear, is wanted for failure to appear on burglary, robbery, and aggravated battery charges out of Bingham County. He's believed to still be in the Bingham County and Bannock County area. Afraid of bear is described as five foot five inches tall, 165 pounds, with brown eyes and black hair. He has a small X by his right eye and has t tattoos on both forearms. He has violent tendencies and may be armed with a gun or other weapon. If you see afraid of bear, do not approach him. Call the U.S. Marshal Service at 208-317-2904 or your local law enforcement agency. An Idaho Falls man already serving prison time on a sexual abuse conviction has been sentenced to more time after a new victim came forward. 57-year-old Thomas Dale Roberts was sentenced yesterday to up to 16 years in prison for two new sex abuse charges. All his charges stem from his conviction of sexually abusing children at a daycare. He wasn't an employee of the daycare, but lived in the same building. Roberts would have been eligible for parole this year, but the new sentence means he will remain in prison until at least 2023. The new victim told police that's why she came forward. One was killed and four were injured in a single car crash in Fremont County last night. According to Idaho State Police, at around 914, police responded to the crash westbound on US 20 at milepost 390 near Harriman State Park, south of Last Chance. Officers say a car crossed into eastbound lanes, left the pavement, and flipped on its top. An adult passenger died at the scene of the crash. Four were taken to Eastern Idaho Regional Medical Center in Idaho Falls two children by helicopter, and another child and an adult by ambulance. Eastern Idaho Regional Medical Center recently became revered as a level two trauma center, one of three in the state of Idaho. And for Ermac, summertime is peak trauma season. Most of the hospital's trauma caused injuries come from outdoor activities, with the top five most common being falling, motor vehicle accidents, ATV riding, motorcycling, and horseback riding. But one obstacle Ermac faces is making sure people know these resources are available.
Sometimes it's just a lack of education and they don't know what we provide exactly. Um, I've had phone calls from Twin Falls saying, hey, I didn't know you guys had a PICU. Do you really have a PICU? And I'm like, absolutely, we have a PICU and we've had a PICU for a couple of years. The hospital says they're doing outreach to make sure their services are more known and to save people from having to travel out of state for services they may not have to. Okay, Michael, what are those temperatures looking like right now? Rachel, currently for the Snake River Plain, temperatures for the most part ranging from those 50s to those 60s right now in Idaho Falls. Good morning in your area. It's 51 degrees. It's 56 right now in Fort Hall. The further south you go, at least across Pocatello and American Falls, we're seeing those 60s. And as we pan out to take a look across the upper Snake Highlands into western Wyoming, temperatures in the 40s and 50s, but chillier across Yellowstone. Look at that in the upper 30s for this morning. Rachel, back to you. Okay, thank you so much, Michael. An emergency election is taking place in Bannock County next week. KPVI News that works for you, journalist Kate Garner, tells us what the election is for and who is eligible to vote. Tight budgets have left the North Bannock County Fire District without funding. Unfortunately, um, we couldn't find anything that was mutually beneficial for the individual city entities and for ourselves. Without the help of the cities, the voters will now decide what happens next to the fire district at an emergency levy election. The election day is August 6th will be at the, your normal polling place. So wherever you go to vote for the mayor, the school districts, and any federal or state or county candidate is the same place you would go for this particular election. Early voting is taking place now until Friday, August 2nd, but not all Bennett County residents can vote on this levy. Only those who would be affected by this new tax are eligible to vote at this emergency election. Only those living in the boundaries which encompass all the land surrounded by red on this map will be able to vote. It's a temporary two-year measure to raise the funds necessary to build the facilities and buy the equipment necessary to fight fires outside city limits. 500000 each year. So okay. it's a total of $1 million. And then in year three, it goes back to where we were. That's correct. Currently, landowners in the area pay just over $50 a year for every $100,000 of assessed property. Fire officials don't know exactly how much each person will pay, but say it won't be more than a total of $240 per year. Election day polling places will be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and officials want to remind voters to check if they are eligible to vote. You have to actually be taxed on that fire district in, in, within the boundary lines of that um, special district. In Pocatello, Cade Garner, KPVI News, that works for you. To learn more about the polling locations and North Bannock County Fire District boundaries, go to kpvi.com. The University of Idaho has bought land in southern Idaho for what officials say will be the world's largest research dairy. The new property sits at the intersection of I-84 and Highway 93 near Jerome. It's going to be called the Idaho Center for Agriculture, Food and the Environment, or CAFE for short. Officials say it's going to have a public visitor center, classrooms and housing, hopefully up and running by 2024. The dairy itself will hold about 2,000 head of cattle. Well, Michael, what should people expect outside today? Rachel, looking outside right now across McCammon, looking like a pretty cloudy sky out there. It actually looks kind of threatening. Unfortunately, that threatening look will continue throughout the day. I'll talk more about that coming up next in my full forecast. You're watching KPVI News Today with Rachel Cox Rosen and meteorologist Michael Ottovino. KPVI News Today, news that works for you. And now Storm Tracker weather with meteorologist Michael Ottovino. We're off to a rather cloudy start to the morning across Idaho Falls. Taking a look outside, you can see those clouds starting to build into the sky. Overall, a little chilly out there across Idaho Falls, coming in at 51 degrees across Pocatello. Just about 11 degrees warmer for this morning, coming in at 62 degrees with a calm wind. And as we move throughout the morning and even throughout the day, unfortunately, those clouds will be on the increase. As far as temperatures go right now, for the most part across eastern Idaho, we are in the 50s. Some of the higher elevations are seeing the those 40s. Currently across Jackson, it's 47 degrees. It's 46 right now in Afton. Much cooler up in Yellowstone. Look at that, 39 degrees. But for the Snake River Plain, 56 currently across Blackfoot. It is 64 right now in American Falls. Fortunately for this morning, we are starting off the morning dry. No, notice not seeing any showers, nor are we seeing any thunderstorms out there. But once I pan out, we will be under more of a southerly flow of air, which again will drive these clouds into eastern Idaho and western Wyoming 
coming for today. And notice starting to see some moisture out across the Provo area. We could see some showers and storms pass through eastern Idaho and also western Wyoming for today. While they may be isolated, there's no guarantee that we will be dry. So, But it does look like a lot of the moisture does stay to the east of the Snake River Plain, but can't rule out a, a shower or storm passing through for this afternoon. For the most part for today, expect it to look kind of gloomy outside. Expect lots of clouds in the sky. Maybe we see a few peaks of sunshine here and there, but overall clouds will be the dominant feature out there for today. But with the southerly flow of air, look at that. Temperatures still pretty warm for today. It'll be 91 across Blackfoot, 92 across American Falls, 91 across Idaho Falls, Upper Snake Highlands, into Western Wyoming, seeing high temperatures generally in those 80s. On the future tracker, timing out any moisture in those clouds. Notice by about 7 o'clock this morning, starting to see those clouds pass through again right around lunchtime, looking like a completely overcast sky. But once we get past through about the 12 o'clock hour, then we'll start to see very isolated showers or even some storms start to build in across this parts of the Snake River Plain, also across the Afton area. And some of those could develop as they move eastward. So they'll start off maybe as some sprinkles across Pocatello. And then as they move across the eastern Snake Highlands, they will become stronger. Notice the shades of yellow indicating a darker, um, a heavier band of rain or a thunderstorm. And then 8 o'clock tonight, we could see some more, at least across the western half of Wyoming. And then by about the overnight again for the Snake River Plain, notice those clouds start to move eastward. We could see some showers and storms lingering across the western half of Wyoming. Once those showers and storms do pass through for tonight, while they may be limited pretty much to the western half of Wyoming, sky conditions will generally be partly cloudy for the overnight. And these temperatures you see will be the temperatures you wake up to tomorrow morning, mainly in the 50s and those 60s. Your Southeast Idaho Chevy dealers seven day forecast leaves us with a high temperature of 89 degrees for tomorrow, a chance for a little bit more scattered showers and storms that compared to what we could see today across some areas. And then for the weekend, look at that. It looks pretty nice out there, at least on Saturday, mainly sunny. Sunday looks like the greater of the two days where we could see a little bit more widespread showers or storms. Those could continue into the Monday time frame. Across Idaho Falls, your seven-day forecast, mostly cloudy for today. Chance of showers and storms for tomorrow, mainly sunny for Friday and Saturday, with the 90s returning and sticking around from about Friday through Monday. Across the Teton area, Jackson, Afton, and Driggs. Chance of showers and storms for today and tomorrow. Mainly sunny for Friday and Saturday. And across the Central Mountains, Salmonch House, and Mackey. Partly sunny for today with a chance for showers and storms on Thursday and Friday. Rachel, back to you. Okay, thank you so much, Michael. Two people were killed in a shooting at a Mississippi Walmart yesterday. Officials in Memphis say Martez Terrell Abram is responsible for yesterday morning's shooting at a Walmart in South Haven. The 39-year-old employee, who was recently suspended, began shooting inside the store. There he shot and killed Walmart managers Anthony Brown and Brandon Gales. Martez encountered police in the parking lot where he and an officer were injured during a shootout. Abram is currently hospitalized and faces two Two murder charges. Authorities say he also started a fire in the back of the store during the incident. A vigil was held last night in Northern California for Kayla Salazar, the 13-year-old girl who was shot and killed at the Gilroy Garlic Festival on Sunday. Family and friends gathered at Ace and Power Academy in San Jose to remember Kayla. Her family said she was kind, noble, and caring. As a recent graduate of Ace and Power Academy, her family said Kayla was loved by staff and students alike. The 13-year-old was killed Sunday when a gunman opened fire on the Gilroy Garlic Festival in Gilroy. California. Two other people died in the shooting, a six-year-old boy and a 25-year-old man, and 12 were injured. The gunman was shot and killed by police. Kayla was a beautiful children that really cared for other people, and she cared about animals, and she was our motivation, and we're in pain that we lost her. Two babies, one of whom has died, were found abandoned yesterday near a dumpster in Fairfield, California. The babies appeared to be newborns and were found in the back of a shopping plaza parking lot. The second baby was rushed to the hospital. It's believed that the babies could be twins. Responding officers detained a woman who they found nearby and who appeared to have recently given birth. 
The woman was taken to the hospital and is being questioned. Now to politics. Debate two is halfway done for the Democrats. Ten appeared on stage last night in Detroit. Ten more are up tonight. Tracy Potts has our recap, plus what to expect. Can I complete that, please? And your time is up. Bernie Sanders came out swinging, defending his signature health plan, Medicare for All. You don't know that, Second Bernie. of all, we'll come I, to you in a second, I do know when I wrote the damn bill. But middle-of-the-road Democrats argue against getting rid of all private insurance. It'll turn off independent voters and get Trump re-elected. Opponents challenged progressive ideas like the Green New Deal. That is a disaster at the, at the ballot box. You might as well FedEx the election to Donald Trump. Free college. They literally would pay for wealthy kids, for Wall Street kids, to go to college and wiping out student loan debt. I almost wonder why you're Democrats. You seem to think there's something wrong about using, about using the instruments of government to help people. Pete Buttigieg is backing a ban on assault weapons. High school is hard enough without having to worry about whether you're going to get shot. Candidates split on free health care for immigrants. You are playing into Donald Trump's hands. And reducing penalties for illegally crossing the border. If you want to come into the country, you should at least ring the doorbell. We reserve the right to criminally prosecute them Thank if they you, do Congress. not. But they agree on two things, calling out racism. We need to call out white supremacy for what it is, domestic terrorism. And beating Donald Trump. And as much as it's been an issue here in Washington, not one word about impeachment in this debate. Tonight, 10 more candidates, including a rematch of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. The Federal Reserve is expected to make an announcement on interest rates today. Chairman of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, is expected to announce that the Fed will cut interest rates. Market pros expect a quarter point rate cut. It's first since interest rates were taken to zero during the financial crisis in December 2008. Powell has made it clear the Fed would be willing to make a so-called insurance cut to protect the economic expansion, which is the longest on record as of this month. A group of architects have put three neon pink seesaws through the border wall between Mexico and the United States in Ciudad Juarez and the outskirts of El Paso, Texas. One of the architects who worked on the seesaws said the piece is a reflection on the relationship between the two countries. Referring to the installation, he said, if you do something on one side, it will have an impact on the other side. And that's what happens politically between the United States and Mexico. A section of the border fence was painted blue in 2015, so it would blend with the sky. Two years ago, artists projected light features onto border wall prototypes south of San Diego. And in 2017, a French artist directed a photo of a giant toddler peering over the wall. Still to come this morning on KPVI News Today, the age you choose to have children may affect how your child behaves. Plus, if you're planning a move and pregnant, you may want to wait. And a little girl gets new lungs. That's coming up on KPVI News Today. It is 620 and 62 degrees. KPVI News Today. News that works for you. It is 623 and 62 degrees, and in health news this morning, older patients who stop taking statins may face a higher risk of heart problems. French researchers tracked 120,000 75-year-olds who had been taking cholesterol-lowering statins for two years. Those who stopped taking the drugs were 33% more likely to have a heart attack or stroke over the next two years. Experts say this does not mean discontinuing statins causes heart problems, but there is an association. New research suggests children born to older parents tend to have fewer behavior problems. The study included nearly 33,000 children in the Netherlands who were between 10 and 12 years old. It showed kids with older parents were less likely to have aggressive or poor behavior. However, a parent's age did not affect children's risk of anxiety or depression. Lastly, moving to a new home during the first trimester of pregnancy could impact a baby's health. University of Washington researchers looked at data from 150,000 infants born over a seven-year period. They found moms who had moved early in pregnancy were 42 percent more likely to have a premature birth compared to those who did not move. Their babies were also more likely to be low birth weight. Experts say the physical and mental stress of moving may trigger premature birth. 
A little girl from Maine was in desperate need of a new set of lungs. The five-year-old has cystic fibrosis, a genetic disease that damages the lungs and digestive system. She was put on a priority transplant list earlier this year after her lung function severely deteriorated. But a couple of weeks ago, the family received a call that new lungs are available. While the transplant is not a cure, the family hopes it could extend her life by years. Vivian Lee has more. It's a beautiful sunny day and five-year-old Michaela Crosby is on the move. Woo! From jumping on the trampoline, pumping the swings, to climbing the jungle gym. Because I can do something cool. Pretty amazing for a little girl who used to be out of breath from doing just a lap around the kitchen island. No, I was just sitting here and I'm like, oh my word, she's just like running and being a kid. Michaela has cystic fibrosis, a rare disease that keeps her lungs from functioning normally. Struggling to breathe and coughing fits happened every day. Crosby came into Michaela's life as a foster parent. A little more than two years later, in January of this year, Michaela was adopted. The next month, she was life flighted to Children's Hospital in Boston after her oxygen levels got dangerously low. She recovered, but she was placed on a high priority list for a double lung transplant. You know, we were told she wasn't going to make it through the night several times. And just knowing that she did and she fought for her life and I knew she'd do it again. Michaela was more than ready when the call came in the middle of the night last month. And I woke her up and I said, guess what? And she like kind of looked at me and said, they've got you new lungs. And she jumped right out of bed and she's like, yay. The little girl had no complications following the six-hour surgery. After several weeks of rehab and therapy, doctors allowed Michaela to come home. She has to take more than two dozen medications every day to keep her body from rejecting her new lungs. She could be fine the rest of her life, or she could need three more. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, I think it's all depending on her body and how her body reacts to them. Healthy lungs that are allowing her to breathe normally for the very first time so she can jump and grow and be like any other kid. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No, no more Michaela's jumping on the bed. Michaela is making weekly visits to her doctor in Boston to make sure that her body is accepting her new lungs. Now let's check back in with meteorologist Michael Adafino. Michael, what's it looking like outside? Rachel, taking a look outside right now across Jackson right now. Again, it's looking pretty cloudy out there as well, looking at the view. Look at those Tetons, but again, not really seeing much in terms of any sunshine out there. The clouds are starting to build in, and the clouds will stick around for most of the day, I think, across the Jackson, even the Afton areas. You could see some showers and storms build in later on this afternoon. I'll talk more about that coming up later in my full forecast. Back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Michael. Still to come this morning on KPVI News today, an emergency election is coming to Bannock County. Plus, why is your water bill up? One local city wants to help you find out. That's coming up on KPVI News today. It is 627 and 62 degrees. We want to make sure that our staff and our physicians um, understand what the standard of care is across the nation. A local hospital gets some new recognition. Plus, one is in custody after a shooting in Pocatello. It is 630 and 62 degrees, and this is KPVI News Today for Wednesday, July 31st, 2019. KPVI News Today. News that works for you. Good morning, and thank you so much for watching today. I'm Rachel Cox Rosen. And good morning, I'm Michael Lodovino. So, Michael, how's it looking outside today? Out there to start off our morning, it is pretty cloudy out there. Unfortunately, the clouds are starting to build in now, and they will continue to build in throughout the day. And we could even see a few showers or even some thunderstorms develop later on this afternoon. But despite the clouds, it will still be pretty hot out there for today. Temperatures rising into those upper 80s and even lower 90s later on this afternoon. Idaho Falls, 9 o'clock this morning. Again, mostly cloudy and then completely cloudy for this afternoon with temperatures rising into those upper 80s by about 4 o'clock. And even across Pocatello around 4 o'clock, we'll see those upper 80s. I think we'll actually get a couple of degrees warmer than that into those lower 90s. And I'll talk more about the rain chances coming up in my full forecast. All right. Thank you so much, Michael.
Our top story this morning, a quote targeted drive by shooting luckily ends with no injuries in Idaho Falls. According to Idaho Falls police, only vehicles were damaged at the incident at Taufus Park last night. Multiple shots were reported to IFPD at around 930. Investigators say the shooting happened after an argument between two groups. After a search of the area around the park, police took an unknown man in for questioning. It's not clear what the man's involvement in the incident is. Police say there is no danger to the public. And Pocatello police have arrested a man after another shooting yesterday afternoon. It happened around 1245 in the alley behind 424 North 10th Avenue, about three blocks from Clark Street. Police say a man and woman were found sitting in a car parked in the alley, both with gunshot wounds to their torsos. A witness provided first aid until authorities could take the victims to Portneuf Medical Center. No word on their condition. Officers quickly found the suspect, 32-year-old Stephen Holmes, and the gun used in the shooting. He's been arrested and charged with two counts of aggravated battery with a weapon enhancement. U.S. Marshals are looking for a man wanted for multiple violent crimes. Samir Sam, afraid of bear, is wanted for failure to appear on burglary, robbery, and aggravated battery charges out of Bainham County. He's believed to still be in the Bainham County and Bannock County area. Afraid of bear is described as five foot five inches tall, 165 pounds, with brown eyes and black hair. He has a small X by his right eye and has tattoos on both forearms. He he has violent tendencies and may be armed with a gun or other weapon. If you see Afraid of Bear, do not approach him. Call the U.S. Marshal Service at 208-317-2904 or your local law enforcement agency. An Idaho Falls man already serving prison time on a sexual abuse conviction has been sentenced to more time after a new victim came forward. 57-year-old Thomas Dale Roberts was sentenced yesterday to up to 16 years in prison for two new sex abuse charges. All his charges stem from his conviction of sexually abusing children at a daycare. He wasn't an employee of the daycare, but lived in the same building. Roberts would have been eligible for parole this year, but the new sentence means he will remain in prison until at least 2023. The new victim told police that's why she came forward. One was killed and four were injured in a single car crash in Fremont County last night. According to Idaho State Police, at around 914, police responded to the crash westbound on US 20 at milepost 390 near Harriman State Park, south of Last Chance. Officers say a car crossed into eastbound lanes, left the pavement, and flipped on its top. An adult passenger died at the scene of the crash. Four were taken to Eastern Idaho Regional Medical Center in Idaho Falls, two children by helicopter, and another child and an adult by ambulance. Next Tuesday, there will be an emergency election in Bannock County, but not everyone will be eligible to vote. The North Bannock County Fire District no longer has a contract with the city of Chubbuck. Without this contract, the fire district will not fight fires that burn outside city limits surrounding both Chubbuck and Pocatello. An emergency election could lead to a new million dollar levy, which raises funds over the next two years, so the fire district can build a station and purchase equipment to do it themselves. We have to have a building to house the trucks because in wintertime they have water on them. You don't want the water to freeze. Uh, we have to have equipment for the fire, the volunteer firefighters. They have all their turnouts, you know, their boots, their, their coats and hats and all their air apparatus and all that. So. Fire officials don't know exactly how much each person will pay, but say it won't be more than $240 per year. Now let's check back in with Michael Adovino. Michael, what are those temperatures looking like right now? Rachel, for the most part across the Snake River Plain, we're seeing those 50s, but for the lower half of the Snake River Plain, a few areas are in those 60s for this morning. Currently across Pocatello, it's 62 degrees. It's 64 across American Falls, 62 right now in Craters of the Moon, and even across the upper Snake High into western Wyoming, seeing a mixture of the 40s across Jackson and Thane to the 50s across Driggs and also across Island Park for this morning. Rachel, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Michael. Idaho Fish and Game has some good news for anglers. They've recently stocked four ponds in the Upper Snake area with catfish. Experts say just like us, most fish slow down and find colder water when it's hot. But catfish thrive in warmer temperatures and are often easier to catch. So if you're planning a fishing trip, you might want to consider Rexburg Nature Park, Becker Riverside, or Jim Moore Pond.
Has your water bill been a bit high? Well, the city of Pocatello just made it easier to find out why. Yesterday, the city announced its new water smart software, which allows utility billing customers to see information about their water usage. This includes average gallons used per day, use over a two-year period, and even money-saving tips to help you conserve water. The software also gives customers the option to sign up for alerts, which will let you know if there will be disruption to water service or when leaks are detected. You can also send a message to utility services directly through WaterSmart, which city officials say will help the utility office be more efficient. Provide you the ability to look at it whenever it's convenient for you. And like I said, if you have questions, you can just send them. We'll receive them during our time. Anytime we can re reduce the phone calls and the waiting for our customers is always a good thing. To find the link to Water Smart, head to kpvi.com. Eastern Idaho Regional Medical Center was recently re-verified as a level two trauma center. KPVI News that works for you, journalist Zane Hopin, spoke with officials who hope more people learn about the health care resources they provide locally. Trauma is the leading cause of death for people until they reach age 44. Eastern Idaho Regional Medical Center recently became re-verified as a level two trauma center, one of three in the state of Idaho. We want to make sure that our staff and our physicians um, understand what the standard of care is across the nation and that we meet that so that we optimize that outcome for them. And for ERMAC, summertime is peak trauma season. Most of the hospital's trauma caused injuries come from outdoor activities with top five most common being falling, motor vehicle accidents, ATV riding, motorcycling, and horseback riding. But one obstacle ERMAC faces is making sure people know these resources are available. Sometimes it's just a lack of education and they don't know what we provide exactly. Um, I've had phone calls from Twin Falls saying, hey, I didn't know you guys had a PICU. Do you really have a PICU? And I'm like, absolutely we have a PICU and we've had a PICU for a couple of years. The hospital says they're doing outreach to make sure their services are more known and to save people from having to travel out of state for services they may not have to. One way they've helped people reduce travel for care is by adding their burn center, which has already saved many patients time and money. Having the burn center added in has affected our exposure, so we're getting patients from uh, farther out in Montana and Wyoming, places that wouldn't typically have come here because they would just overfly us. Providing help to the locals as well as the region. The verification process is not required, but ERMAC hopes it will help staff members keep the standard in mind. The University of Idaho has bought land in southern Idaho for what officials say will be the world's largest research dairy. The new property sits at the intersection of I-84 and Highway 93 near Jerome. It's going to be called the Idaho Center for Agriculture, Food and the Environment, or CAFE for short. Officials say it's going to have a public visitor center classrooms and housing, hopefully up and running by 2024. The dairy itself will hold about 2,000 head of cattle. The world's largest steam locomotive is still chugging its way to Wyoming. Big Boy is 133 feet long and weighs over 1 million pounds. It's just one of 25 steam engines built by Union Pacific in the 1940s. And now it's on its way to Wyoming in honor of the 150th anniversary of the Transcontinental Railroad. Big Boy just left Chicago yesterday morning, which was one of the many stops on the way back to its original perch at the Union Pacific Steam Shop in Cheyenne. The locomotive is on track to be there by August 8th. And now here's a look at what's coming up on the Today Show. Exactly. Guys, good morning to you. And coming up, the sparks were flying at last night's Democratic presidential debate. A lot of infighting between the candidates on stage. We will have complete coverage. Also ahead, we will sit down with a remarkable group with a shared experience. All of them shark attack survivors, how their encounters have shaped and changed their lives. All that, plus we are packed with stars today. Queer Eyes Fab Five are going to be here. They'll celebrate the new season of their hit show. We've lined up some fun surprises for them. And we are grilling on the plot with two of the greats, Bobby Flay and Michael Simon. All that when we see you here on Today, guys. Nothing on the Selfie Museum today.
The San Diego Zoo is welcoming a very special new addition. After carrying this little tank for 493 days, a southern white rhino named Victoria finally gave birth. The baby boy is the first of his kind to be born in North America from artificial insemination. That's great for the species because they are listed as near threatened, but it's an even bigger deal for northern white rhinos. There are only two of them left alive on Earth, and they're both females. They're closely related to southern white rhinos, though, so scientists hope someday they can use southern whites to act as surrogates for northern white embryos. That could be 10 or 20 years away. You know, it's interesting to see that they call it a baby rhino, but it's so big. I know, you know it's I know. Really big. Compared to the adults, it's still little. But I'm oh, really yes. focused on the fact that the gestation period is 400 something days. That's long. a long time. That's a long time. Imagine it's carrying a, more, a little rhinoceros. That's more than a year. Wow. I know. I can't even imagine. These these are some good moms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Happy it's not me. <laughs> yeah, it never will be, Michael. So look on this morning. Your company has invented air conditioning to go. But first, at 642, let's take another look at those temperatures. We're in the 50s and the 60s, and despite the clouds, it'll still be hot out there today. I'll tell you what the temperatures will be like this afternoon coming up next. You're watching KPVI News Today with Rachel Cox Rosen and meteorologist Michael Ottovino. KPVI News Today, news that works for you. And now, Storm Tracker weather with meteorologist Michael Ottovino. We're off to a cloudy start to the morning currently across Idaho Falls. You can see all those clouds in the distance, maybe a few peaks of sunshine, but it is pretty chilly out there in some areas. 51 degrees currently across Idaho Falls, but across Pocatello, just about 11 degrees warmer out there coming in at 62, so a little bit more comfortable. And we are seeing generally a calm wind to start off this morning. For the most part, across the rest of the region, we're seeing temperatures also in the 50s and the 60s currently across Twin Falls. Good morning, it's 65 degrees in your area 55 currently in Haley 52 right now in salmon and across the upper snake highlands into western wyoming temperatures in the 40s but look at that down south already 83 degrees in salt lake city Storm tracker radar, for the most part, pretty clear to start off this morning, not seeing any moisture out there. And even as we get a wider view, the moisture is pretty much located to our south, looking like some showers starting to build in across the Provo area. And notice these clouds we will be under a south-southwesterly flow. So these clouds will be pushed into our area as we move throughout the day, and they will be on the increase into the afternoon hours, where we could see some of that moisture that you are seeing down south make its way into our area later on this afternoon. Also into the evening hours, I think the greatest areas of seeing this will be across the western half of Wyoming, but we could see a shower or two pop up later on this afternoon, especially across the lower half of the Snake River Plain. Despite the cloud cover, we'll be under that southerly flow of air, which will still keep temperatures on the hot side today. Most of the Snake River Plain will see those 90s. It will be 91 today across Blackfoot, 91 also across Idaho Falls, 90 degrees today in Rexburg, 92 for American Falls, even the upper Snake Highlands into western Wyoming, seeing temperatures for the most part in those 80s. And again, those clouds stick around for most of the day out there, and they will continue into the evening. Tomming out the clouds and also any moisture for you. Again, 7 o'clock this morning, starting to see all those clouds build into our area. Right around lunchtime, we do have a complete overcast sky. And then once we get past the 12 o'clock hour, that's when we could see some unsettled weather building across the Snake River Plain around 3 o'clock. Very isolated showers popping up across. Pocatello, also across Black, but, but notice when I put it in motion, they start to develop just east of the I-15 corridor. So while they make their way across the eastern Snake Highlands, that's when they'll start to develop across maybe even Soda Springs, also across Driggs, Jackson, later on this afternoon into the early evening, and even across the western half of Wyoming, your area. Could see some for this evening as well, and a few of them could continue into the first half of the overnight by about 11 o'clock. Notice some of those showers and storms lingering across Afton, and then for the most part, those low temperatures for tonight and what you will wake up to tomorrow will generally be in the 50s and the 60s across the Snake River Plain. Your Southeast Idaho Chevy dealers, seven-day four 
forecast leaves us mostly cloudy for today. A chance of showers and storms that will be a little bit more widely scattered for tomorrow. High temperature of 89 degrees. Then it looks like those 90s stick around for the weekend. Friday and Saturday looking really nice. Sunday we could see some showers and storms and those could continue into the first half of next week. Across Idaho Falls, your seven day forecast mainly cloudy for today. A chance of showers and storms for tomorrow. Mainly sunny for Friday and Saturday and also we could see some showers and storms on Sunday and Monday. Across the Teton area, Jackson, Afton and Driggs, chance of showers and storms for today and tomorrow. Mainly sunny for Friday and Saturday. Temperature is pretty consistent in those 80s and across the central mountains. Salmon Chalice and Mackey, partly cloudy for today with a chance for showers and storms on Thursday and Friday. Rachel, back to you. Okay, thank you so much, Michael. Holiday Inn is making a move to get greener. That tops our look at consumer news. The hotel chain's parent company, Intercontinental Group, says it'll be ditching those travel-sized tubes of shampoo, conditioner, and bath gel in all of its hotel rooms by 2021. Those roughly 200 million miniature-sized bottles per year will be replaced by bulk-sized toiletries to reduce plastic waste. The company, which owns more than 5,600 locations across multiple brands, including Holiday Inn says it's the first major hotel chain to make the environmentally friendly change. AT&T is giving its streaming TV service Direct TV Now a new name. It will be known as AT&T TV Now starting later this summer. The company says the core offering of channels won't change just the name. AT&T purchased Direct TV Satellite TV in 2015 before launching the streaming service. The satellite offering will still be called Direct TV. When it's brutally hot, anywhere with an AC is the place to be. But what about those times when you can't enjoy air conditioning's cool breeze? Get your AC to go. Seriously. This is Sony's mini AC. It's hidden in a built-in pocket on a specially designed t-shirt. It's called the Rion Pocket, a smartphone-sized body cooling device you can actually wear. It's being crowdfunded through Sony's first flight acceleration program in Japan. Sony says it'll be able to lower your body temperature by 20 23 degrees, and it can also be used to warm you up when cold weather blows in. It uses what's known as the Peltier effect. Electric currents are used to transfer heat between two objects, which ends up creating a temperature difference. Right now, you'll control it with an app on your smartphone. It runs on battery for 90 minutes on one charge and takes two hours to recharge. Sony says the handy little device will start shipping next March. They'll cost about 117 bucks. There's a new scam on the rise from vacation rentals to college apartments. Savvy scammers are stealing big deposits and leaving renters with no place to stay. Liz McLaughlin has more on how to protect yourself. This summer, some renters didn't get the vacation home they paid for. And I just cried. With thousands scammed this year by phony rental listings. It looks like a great rental exactly where you want to be. It's in your price point. Tom Bartholomew of the Better Business Bureau tells me they're getting a flood of horror stories. When you book a home and everything looks legitimate and then you fly across the ocean and show up and not only don't find that rental, but there's no home at all. Scammers are getting more savvy, duping consumers with rental listings using photos of homes for sale. Or sometimes fraudsters copy real listings, such as Carolyn O'Brien's Oregon vacation home. How dare you take our house and scam someone out of their vacation and out of their money? Protect yourself by doing a reverse Google image search on photos to see if they're listed elsewhere. We've seen some of these in the past that they've come up in four or five different places. Experts suggest only booking on websites such as Airbnb that can verify listings and offer protections. And if you are asked to leave the platform in any way, that should not be happening and that should definitely be reported to Airbnb. And avoid paying with a wire transfer, cashier's check, or payment apps such as Zelle and Venmo. Chances of recovery on this are minuscule. Instead, arm yourself by only using a credit card. When it's too cheap it's, and it's too good to be true, it's always too good to be true. And staying skeptical. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News.
Now scammers are targeting those looking to make a move with fake home and apartment rentals. The Better Business Bureau is seeing more housing fraud reports as students head back to college. If you see something that looks suspicious, flag it. And if you suspect you are the victim of a scam, report it to the police and the Better Business Bureau. KPVI wants to make August your most epic month of summer with our Rockin' 3 concert giveaway. The winner this morning gets two tickets each to three awesome concerts. That's a total of six tickets. Those concerts are Lee Bryce on August 8th, the Steve Miller Band on August 16th, and the Piano Guys on August 14th. That is a $400 value. To win, be the sixth caller to 208-235-3156. That number again is 208 208- 235-3156. Winners must pick up the tickets here at KPBI by August 7th at 5 p.m. Our address is 902 East Sherman Street in Pocatello. Call now and if you don't win, tune in all week for another chance. And coming up on KPBI News Today, we take a look at your KPBI News Today headlines. KPBI News Today. News that works for you. It is 656 and 62 degrees, and before we head out, let's take a look at your KPBI News Today headlines. A, quote, targeted drive-by shooting ends with no injuries in Idaho Falls. Idaho Falls police say only vehicles were damaged in the incident at Totfus Park last night. Multiple shots were reported to officers at around 930 after police say there was an argument between two groups. Police took one man into custody for questioning. 62-year-old Stephen Holmes was arrested after a shooting in Pocatello yesterday. It happened around 1245 in the alley behind 424 North 10th Avenue. Police say a man and woman were found sitting in a car parked in the alley with gunshot wounds to their torsos. The victims were taken to Portneuf Medical Center. One was killed after a car flipped in Fremont County last night. Idaho State Police say at around 914, police responded to the crash westbound on US 20 at milepost 390. An adult passenger died at the scene. Four were taken to Ermac, two kids by helicopter, and another child and an adult by ambulance. Now let's turn it over to meteorologist Michael Adovino. Michael. Thanks, Rachel. For today, across the Snake River Plain, generally expect a mostly cloudy sky out there. It will look threatening for this afternoon, and I can't rule out an isolated shower or storm popping up across the Snake River Plain, so be aware of that for today. All right, thank you so much, Michael. And KPVI News doesn't stop here. For the latest news, weather, and local updates, download the KPVI News app for your phone or tablet at kpvi.com. Have a great day.